So the game I'm playing today is actually not a game at all. This is Stellarium. For the uninitiated, Stellarium is a planetarium simulator that allows you to view the night sky in real time. And that's pretty much it. But I wanted to make a video of this program because it's been a while since I made a video of any kind of program that had to do with astronomy. Um, the last one I played that was like this was uh, Celestia, which was a solar system simulator. But Stellarium is a bit different from Celestia because it's basically a... It's, it's not necessarily a solar system simulator, but it's more of a night sky simulator. Or just a sky simulator in general, because you can also view the sky during the daytime here, so... This is in real time, so... Everything's in real time, everything moves the way it would if you were viewing the night sky in real life, including the sun. Um, the sun is setting over there, as you can see. You have all this information on the left of the screen. Um, the sun is already set. That's why the uh, altitude is a negative value here. So this is the azimuth and altitude. Uh, tells you how high the sun is in the night sky and whatnot. And I'm not really sure what all the other stuff means, except for the distance and apparent diameter. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff to get to in this game, or that I want to get to. So, because I don't want to ramble too much at the beginning of this video, we're just gonna dive right in here. So, you can uh, move your cursor around here to look around. Well, you can left-click and then drag your cursor to uh, look around. So, you're in this field here. Now, if I go to here, as you can see, there's a bunch of options. Um, we have this right here. Uh, basically shows you location. So, in, in this... Uh, planetarium simulator, you can choose your location. Depending on your location, the sky will be different, just like it is in real life. So this is my current location right now. We got, uh, I'm, uh, I have the location set to, uh, Miramichi, which is a city in, uh, New Brunswick, Canada. Not the city I live in, but I live pretty close to that city, so. My, the city I live in is, uh, not in this game, or cannot be chosen. It's not on this list here. Also, if you left click on this map, you can just you can just move anywhere you want. Like the night sky will instantly change. So we're in Africa, then we're in Australia, so it's it's daytime in Australia right now. Then you can go to Sweden. So you can choose from a bunch of different cities and towns as well. It's pretty cool. United States, you can even go to the North Pole if you want. You can go in the middle of the ocean, but as you can see the scenery doesn't change. You can change the scenery, however. You can go to the South Pole, Antarctica. Scenery still doesn't change, though. I'm just gonna go back to here. There we go. You can uh, set the current location as the default location. You can also get location from network. Um, I'm not really sure how that works. I think it just... Uh, I think it chooses the location based on... I, I, I'm not really sure how it works. I think based on maybe your... IP address? And I'm, I'm not really sure how this works, but for some reason it thinks I'm somewhere in Ontario or somewhere in the United States. I can't really tell where that is, because I can't I can't zoom in the map, I don't think. Right-clicking does absolutely nothing, so I'm not really sure where it's placing me, but it's placing me somewhere in Canada, I think. Or wait, no, I can just I can just change the countries and then Okay, that's kind of weird. I can just change the countries and it just changes this. Well, I have no clue where it, where it placed me, but anyway. I'm, I'm not really sure how get location from network works. Just gonna uncheck that and... Okay, why is this... Really? I can't... I can't... Click on this anymore? Okay, well... I, I This is only... We're only like five minutes into this video and already everything's getting screwed up here. Let's just keep it at this. Doesn't matter if it's the default location or not, so... You can just kind of look around. You got the moon. Now, you can zoom in. You can zoom in by, uh... Scrolling. Scrolling the, the wheel on your mouse. Jeez, I am, I am not explaining things very well here. But you got the moon. It's just, uh... Moving very slowly in the night sky. There's also, a a telescope view. Yeah, ocular view. So you're basically viewing the moon through a telescope can change the magnification as well. We got 12.5 uh, times magnification. 
which translates to a field of view of just 8 degrees. So then we have the 80 times magnification. So you can choose between different telescopes. This is the 80 EDF. This is C1400. Not sure if, if that refers to like real types of telescopes, but um, I'm okay. I'm not even sure what this is because I didn't bother messing around with this stuff. Celestron Micro Guide. Not sure what that is. Ocular Zero, Ocular One. Okay, 40 millimeters, 26. Not sure what this view is exactly. I know this is the different telescope view. Oh, it's slowly moving out of view here. Okay. It just moved back into view. That was strange. You got the different lens, which, again, I, I'm not really sure what this is doing. Oh, wait, it's, it's zooming in on the moon's surface. Okay. Anyway, I'm not really sure what that stuff does. You can change this as well. I think you can, yeah, you can add or delete more telescopes, but um, I'm not going to read all of that. Let me just zoom out of the uh, ocular view right here. So yeah, as you zoom in, the landscape gets very uh, gets very blurry and pixelated, but yeah, so you can just zoom in on the moon. That's some really nice looking textures. Textures are high quality. So you got the moon. And, uh, because this is very close to where I live, this is pretty much what the night sky looks like where I live right now, like in real life. So, I, I wanted to make this night sky look as accurate as possible in, uh, in terms of where I live. So, all of the stuff that I'm seeing in this night sky is, uh, stuff that I can actually see in the night sky outside right now. So, you got the moon. You have all this information, so as you can see, uh, it's moving very slowly towards the Earth. About one kilometer every five, four or five seconds, I would say. Um, it's ascending, because this, uh, this value is going up right here. Also, the reason the, the, alti the altitude of the sun is negative is because it's below the horizon. So, where I live, the sun has already set, and it's pretty dark outside right now, much darker than it currently is in this uh, simulator. You also have Venus and Jupiter right here, which they're very close to each other. Uh, wait, what is what is this over here? Oh, it's a star. HIP47266. Okay, I know that's a star. You got Venus, you can zoom in. So you have phase and illuminated, so about 33% of Venus's surface is illuminated. There you go, it's in a, it's basically in a crescent moon phase. So even Venus has phases. You also have Jupiter. You can also, uh, zoom in on some of its moons. I believe you can see Jupiter if you use binoculars, and I think it's moons as well. Can I zoom in on its moons? Hang on a second. Just to, I'm just gonna pause this simulation here so that they, they stop moving. Yep, there's Io. There you go, magnitude of six. Can I zoom in on Europa? Yeah, I can't, I still can't really see it very well. Yeah, there's Ganymede. There you go. So yeah, I got all these, uh, textures here. I probably can't zoom in on Jupiter's smaller moons, can I? No, I can't. Well, I can't zoom, zoom in on them too much. But those are, those are basically Jupiter's smaller moons, Amalthea and Metis which I think is even smaller than Amalthea. Metis is a is a very small moon of Jupiter. I'm surprised it even appears here in this simulation. I guess if you look very close enough, you can see it in the night sky. Actually, where's Callisto? Oh, Callisto is directly behind Jupiter, so I can't even click on it. Well, forget you, Jupiter. Uh, what's this up here? This is just another star. You can see plenty of stars in the night sky as well. Uh, what What is this? Um, it's a star. It doesn't tell me its name for some reason. Okay, that's strange. It's just a star, I guess. Has no name whatsoever. I guess this star has no name as well? I can't even click on this one. Oh, wait, no, I can. Okay. These stars don't even have names, which is really strange, because most, most stars do have names, even if they're... Not like real names, and just scientific names, like HIP and then a number. Um, there's something behind that tree that I don't think I can click on. Hang on. 
if I zoom out a lot here, yeah, you can you can zoom out pretty far here, 235 degrees. Yeah, for some reason, if you move the camera around like this, you can, uh, yeah, you can make it go in insane. I I don't even know what this is. It's like we're looking at the night sky through a hole in the ground or something. And if I, yeah, if I put it up like this, it's like you can see the entire Earth. That's really strange. Really strange field of view. Messing with my mind. LDN, I'm not even sure what these things are. Oh, well, they're dark nebulas, it tells me right here. So, well, this, this, this is good commentary right here. Um, I think these, yeah, these over here are meteor showers. Can I zoom in on these? Uh, no, I guess I can't. Not really, Just it just shows me an icon. But this, this goes from the 2nd of June to the 29th of July. June 2nd to July 29th. So we got those meteor showers. Wait, let me put this back in real time. Yep, they're slowly moving up in the night sky here. But other than that, it, it just shows an icon. It doesn't show, like, the actual meteors or anything. Let me f fast forward this so we can actually see the rest of the night sky here. There we go. This is what the night sky is going to look like at 1 o'clock tonight. I think you can see, uh, you can see more stuff in the night sky. Yeah, here's Saturn. You go to Saturn here. Pause the simulation so that you can zoom in on it without it moving. You got Titan. Yeah, we got the moon right there. Um, okay. A sky in the background is flickering for some reason. Uh, can I zoom in on Saturn's other moons? Yeah, I can zoom in on this one. Tethys? Tethys? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Rhea? There we go. Um, can I zoom in on Celidus? No, I can't. It's too far away. Or too small. Dione? Yes. So there you go, you got Saturn, got its rings, it's a very high quality texture right here. Uh, what would this look like through a telescope? Oh, this doesn't look good. No, even with a telescope you can't really see it all that well. But, with the lens, have even more magnification and then its rings start to come into view, which is pretty cool actually. If you use another ocular, increase the magnification to 368, then you can really start to see Saturn. Okay. So I, I guess that's how... I guess that's how these things work. Ocular, telescope, and lens. They increase the magnification of the telescope right here. Okay. I see how that works now. I didn't know what these things did. Probably because I didn't bother messing around with them. Um, this is... Okay, this is a crosshair. I was just about to say. What is this thing? Image sensor frame... Whoa. What did I do? Okay. I'm not sure what I even did there. Uh, okay, I don't know what any of that means. What is this? Telrad site? Okay, I guess just... Yeah, this, this thing... I can zoom out. Oh, I can move this thing. Okay, I guess this is this is where I'm, I'm targeting or something. Target Saturn with this. Let's look at some of the other options here. So we got the constellation lines. Shows you the constellations. The constellation labels. You even have the constellation art, which is pretty cool here, but I don't think I'm gonna enable that for now. Also, I'm not sure why the icon for the constellation art is like a, a, a guy with a star for a head. I mean, look at that. You see that icon down there? Don't know why it's like that. Um, the equatorial grid. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The as. The azimuthal grid, azimuthal grid, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly either, but I don't think I am. So, I'm not really sure how any of that stuff works. And you can do this. Switch between equatorial and azimuthal mount. Also, why, why does the landscape look very foggy all of a sudden? Oh, okay. It just, I'm at an angle here. Okay, that, that just looks weird, don't do that. Um, what is this over here? Oh, this is, this is a, oh, this is a planetary system. Alright, zoom in on this. 91 AQR, 91 Aquarius. Alright, so this, I think this is an exoplanet. 
So, effective temperature of 4,665 degrees Kelvin. Um, wait, I am, I am, okay. That's, that's the star. But this is the, this is the planet. So it has the mass of three Jupiters, rotates at about 181 days. So, uh, or is that the orbit? I, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, it doesn't say what its radius is. And it was discovered in 2003, so this is a this is a more recently discovered exoplanet here. So this is this is Psi one, Aquarius. Here's Psi two down over here, and Psi three. Does this one have planets? Doesn't look like it does. This one this one looks like a blue star here. Psi three Aquarius. Yeah. Oh. Oh wait a second! I know why it's flickering because I have I have Twinkle enabled. Yeah, there's there's more settings right here. Stars, absolute scale, relative scale, Milky Way brightness. Yeah, we got the Twinkle right here. It's because I have the Twinkle enabled. That's why it's doing that. If I disable that, yeah, it doesn't do anything. Can I increase this? Okay, okay, I can decrease this a lot. That that star's having a party or something. Okay, I don't want that strobe effect because I don't want people getting seizures from this. You can also uh, turn on turn on or off the light pollution. You can also change this as well. You can change the pressure. You can change the temperature. It's, that's basically the temperature and air pressure in my area right now. Yeah, I I wanted to make this more accurate than I really needed to make it. So, uh, scale moon. Actually, I want to try messing around with that. You can still zoom out while keeping this menu open. Let me go back to, uh, real time here. Hang on, let me exit out of this menu. I need to find the moon here. Alright. We got the moon. I want- please disable this, okay. Uh, what am I targeting? Oh, is this a star cluster? Alright. Moon. What happens if I- if I change your scale? Oh! What happened? Okay. The moon. Oh, moon X4. Okay. Can I can I keep increasing this? Oh god. The moon's coming closer, guys. It's gonna it's gonna crash into the earth. How big can I make this, I wonder? Ten? Oh I can't I can't put it to one hundred. Twenty? Twenty? Okay. Twenty oh okay. Blah, jeez. Stop stuttering here. Or just speaking gibberish. Okay. The highest I can set it to is twenty. Well, that's a pretty large moon. It still it still looks dangerously close. So, uh... No thank you. Turn that off, please. Uh, planet orbits. I might as well show that as well in planet markers. Auto-select landscapes. Wait. Is this gonna change the landscape just based on where I am? Because this landscape is, is like, somewhere in France. is located somewhere in France, so... Okay, I guess it didn't change it, but you can change the landscapes. We got different landscapes here. We even have Mars. You have the Mars landscape right here. Which doesn't make any sense, because the game still thinks we're on Earth. But, oh. Hello. Um, okay. <laughs> How you doing? Um, I, I don't remember what you're called. I'm very sorry. It's really weird, though, how I can, uh... I can, I can, like, look down and I see this thing right here. Also, yeah, I'm... I, I don't even know what I'm doing. This is, this is, this is really trippy here. Okay, so, in that case, I haven't tried doing this yet. Let me change the planet, then. Let me change the planet that I'm on. I'm gonna go to, uh, to Mars here. I'm not sure if there's any light pollution on Mars, but... Let's find out here. We can change, change this. Alright guys, we're gonna go to Mars. Let's do this. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of planets here. There's even, I can even go to moons. Um, okay. Where's Mars? There you go. Oh! Alright, uh, we have different locations on Mars here. You can go anywhere? Yeah? Oh, okay. It's, it's nighttime over in this part of Mars. Um, there is no Canada on Mars, I'm pretty sure. It's really weird how it how it's doing it. Wait, what happens if I get location from network? Okay, no, it it doesn't it doesn't change. All right, um, let me 
look right here, I guess. All right, what can what can we see in the night sky then? Okay, it's it's still uh, it's still daytime on Mars here. When does the sun set? The sun only sets at six in the morning. Well, gee, is <laughs> that means the middle of the day? It's it's nighttime. Well, that's strange. Then again, this is universal time because I I highly doubt Mars has time zones. I don't know, are there time zones on Mars? I have no clue. Well, there you go. These are where all the the constellations would be. So let me let's let's go back. Let's let's look let's look at this here. Okay, so what what does the night sky look like on Mars? Let's let's find out. So um well we can still very faintly see the Milky Way. Uh I wonder if we can see Earth from here. Hang on, this this is this night sky is a bit too cluttered here. Get rid of the deep sky objects for now. Uh, don't get rid of the atmosphere. Yeah, you can also get rid of the ground. So there you go, no ground anymore. I'm just gonna put that back. Jupiter's underneath the ground. Uh, well, there's one of Mars's moons, Deimos. Can I? I wonder if. Wait, can I see this with the telescope? Yeah, there we go. The 368 magnification. So I can see it here using the different lens and oculars. What if I just... just like normal? Okay, I can still see it even if I don't have these things right here, just just through a normal telescope. That's pretty cool. So, that's what you would see on Mars with a telescope. Um, what, what else do we have here? We have Neptune, but I highly doubt we'd be able to see it from all the way over here, even with the telescope. Oh, we kind of can. It just looks like a faint blue dot. Not much, though. Where's Where's Earth? I want to see if we can we can see Earth from here. Is Earth anywhere in the night sky? Let me disable the ground. Uh, where's Earth? Oh, there it is. Okay, so it is underneath the ground. Uh, does it Does it come back up the ground? Does I mean Does it Does it rise Rise from the horizon? Please tell me it does. Alright, well I had to change the dates around a little bit, but... In December, you'll be able to see Earth from Mars. There we go. There's Earth right there. You can even see the moon. What does this look like in the the, the telescope? The the, 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 telescope? Oh my god. My, m wow, I, I... I'm sorry. I know my, my commentary is, is very weird in this video, but... I, I, don't, I don't think I uh, do these videos often enough. I'm not used to commentating on things other than games. This is still pretty cool, though. This is a pretty cool program. I like this. Besides, th these kinds of programs are what got me into astronomy in the first place. That's why I'm so interested in astronomy. It's basically programs like Celestia and uh, Stellarium. Well, mostly Celestia that uh, got me into astronomy. Because I already mentioned that Celestia was the the first uh, solar system simulator I ever used, at least I think it was. I do remember using another solar system simulator, but I can't for the life of me remember what it was called. Um, so you can't really see Earth all that well, it just appears as a blue dot, even with the magnification, the 368 times magnification, so can't see Earth all that well. But of course we can zoom in like this and then we can see it. Oh my goodness, how you doing? There you go, there's the Earth. What about the moon? Can we see the moon from here? Zoom in on the moon. There we go. Yeah. How you doing? That's pretty cool though. I wonder I wonder if you can see the other planets. Well, you can, but like you can you can view the planets from Jupiter. The only thing is that Jupiter does not have solid ground, and because of that it, it just looks like this. Yeah. As you can see, uh, there's nothing here. It's it's basically gas. It's basically gas. <laughs> That's all there is here. It's it's just gas because Jupiter does not have a solid surface. So uh, let's let's see here. Let me change this to Jupiter. Darn it! Go to location and switch this to Jupiter. Here we go. All right. So there's Jupiter. Um, let's go right into the great red spot. Let's see what it looks like from here. Also, there's there's no Canada on Jupiter. I know that for a fact. Alright, so the Great Red Spot is located at 
20 degrees south, 46 degrees west on Jupiter. All right, that was something I, I didn't know, actually. So now I know where the great red spot is located on Jupiter, where it's located exactly. Let me uh, change this a little bit here. Well, it would appear as though Earth stays below the horizon on Jupiter because all I'm getting right here is a negative value for uh, for Earth in uh, Jupiter's night sky here. Well, that's unfortunate. Or am I getting a negative value? Hang on. See if this see if this changes. Uh, it's like a very drastic change, though. It's like it gets really high. It like it starts increasing a lot, but then it it decreases a lot. That's really strange. Does it does it change if I speed this up? Oh jeez, okay. Hang on, I'm gonna do that off screen because I don't want to give anyone a seizure with this. Well, we have Europa in the sky here. And some of Jupiter's smaller moons have to look straight up in order to see them. Uh what about the telescope view? Oh this is a this is a really nice telescope view actually. And this is pretty good. You can really you can see Europa really well. Of course you probably wouldn't be able to use a telescope on Jupiter. Jupiter has no solid surface. You basically uh fall right through it. Alright. Uh yeah I can I can just see it normally. There you go. That's pretty good. Let me switch this back. There we go. 368 magnification. What am I doing? What did I click on? Okay. So you got Europa. So you can see Europa pretty well. Oh yeah, you can see Europa really well now. So there's there's Europa's surface. Slowly moving through the sky. Uh, what else can we see here? Callisto. It's another one of Jupiter's moons. Can I see this with the telescope? Yes, I definitely can. What does sunset look like? Actually, that that looked pretty cool. Um, what else can we see here? Wait, what about what about the some of Jupiter's smaller moons here? Metis, Metis. I don't sure how you pronounce that. Okay, I don't think that's that's what Metis really looks like. I mean, I I don't think. Metis is a, uh, is, like a, has a spherical shape like that, but, I don't know, not much is known about Jupiter's smaller moons. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, Amalthea. We got the, yeah, that's, that's what the surface of Amalthea looks like for sure. Actually, you know what? Let me, let me go to Amalthea, because I know, I know I can. Is it, is it on here? Yeah, Amalthea. You can actually go on Amalthea's surface here. So... How about... Wait, what's going on? Hang on a second, what is what is going on in the background? Why am I rotating? Okay. So what does this look like then? Wow, really? Jeez! Okay, Amalthea's moving so fast that... That the nights... That you can actually see... All the stars moving in the night sky because it's moving so fast around Jupiter, I think. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, this makes perfect sense right here. Yeah, of of yeah yeah sure. There there there's trees on on Amalthea. You know you just you just saw what the surface looked like. Look, this is the surface of Amalthea. Ain't no trees there. <laughs> I guess I guess it doesn't have a. Uh, it doesn't have a landscape for uh, Amalthea. And also, I have, I, I still have Jupiter selected here. So why is it, why is it even showing this? All right. Well, you got Jupiter, but at least that's what you'd see in the night sky when um, oh, okay. Well, that's terrifying. Just seeing a gigantic planet. Uh, right up in the night sky like that. I mean, could you imagine you're just you're just looking up in the night sky and all of a sudden out of nowhere you just see you just see Jupiter looming overhead. I I'm going to be honest with you guys. That that would freak me out so much. I mean, that would still look pretty cool, but at the same time that would freak me out like it just did a few seconds ago. That's that's actually legitimately terrifying cuz it looks like it's going to crash into the planet. That's why. Looks like it's going to crash right right into the ground. That's that's actually legitimately terrifying.
Also, how did I click on... How am I clicking on things behind Jupiter? Darn it. I just... Click click on Jupiter, please. Okay. How how far away is it? 182,000. Yeah, that would that would definitely be terrifying. <laughs> okay. Let's let's change this here. Let's go to the moon. Yeah, we we have Jupiter on the moon. Um let's change this to the moon here. I'm going to I'm going to be uh ending this video off really soon because I don't have a lot of time to record anyway. I don't have a lot of time left to record. Uh, where's the moon? Also, the moon's not a planet, just for the record, and neither is the Malthia, but... Uh, let's go here. I don't know where here is. But, uh, there's the sun. Mercury, Venus. There's Earth. You can see Earth in the night sky. Use a telescope on... Oh. Uh, I think it's too magnified. There we go. Just, uh... 19 times magnitude. Uh, magnification, I should say, seems to do the trick. There's Earth. I don't know how I clicked on that. Okay. I definitely see the Earth. Well, you can see the Earth without a telescope from the moon. This is the moon's surface. Oh, hello. Is that an astronaut? Okay. Uh, what is this? What in the world is this? Okay, there's just... Part of the ground just doesn't exist right here, I guess. There's a shadow. Okay, I guess this was an actual image taken by an astronaut on the moon. Alright. But I'm not sure I'm not sure where this originates though. But yeah. This is still pretty cool though. There's like mountains on the moon. There's random random astronaut right there. Which is funny. Actually, speaking of people just appearing randomly on the landscapes, if we go to uh, the hurricane landscape right here. I mean, look behind us, there's a bunch of trucks, and as you can see, there's people right there. And just, just some, just some random people in the background. Yeah. You know, it, wouldn't it be kind of funny if you just downloaded this program, and you found yourself in the background of one of the landscapes? Don't you think that would be kind of strange, if that were to happen to you? I mean, that's probably happened to a, a lot of people with Google Earth. Like you're just looking at at places on Google Earth and you see random people there, like they have no they have no idea that <laughs> they're in an image that's being used in Google Earth. And Google Earth is a program that's used by a lot of people. And in fact, my own my own house is in Google Earth. I managed to find my own house on Google Earth. So it it's really it's really strange. It it almost feels like Google's invading your privacy, but. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's just an image of your house on Google Earth. It's 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 kind of it's it feels awkward. Is is what I'm trying to say here? Is that it? Okay, no, thought that was a ski do over there or snowmobile. I think that's just a truck. I don't know. It, it the image is so blurry. I can't even tell. I like how they made the sky transparent in this uh, this uh, landscape as well. Anyway. You can also go to the ocean right here. But other than that, guys, I think this is where I'm going to end things off because I don't have uh, a lot of time left to record, so... I, I would like to show you guys more of this uh, this planetarium simulator, but I can't right now, so... I'm just going to have to end things off for now. But not before going to Neptune very quickly and seeing what we can find in the night sky. Again, Neptune is just gas. So... There you go, just blue. Blue gas everywhere. <laughs> um, well we got the sun. Hang on. Let me let me set the sun. Set sun, please. Come on. There we go. Uh Saturn's moon Triton. I just saw it somewhere. Uh I think Nyad, I think that's another moon of Neptune. Uh where is Triton? There it is right up above me and just zoom in oh yeah we can see from all the way over here well that's a great looking texture right there it just it, it really does look like vomit when I what you know whenever I say that something looks like vomit I I really mean it like it really does look at this for goodness sakes it's just disgusting <laughs> but anyway oh wait are those what is this star cluster or okay I'm not sure what that is over there that's the Milky Way I know that for a fact uh, Triton. Yeah, we can just see with the regular magnification, so... 
Anyway, I'm gonna have to end this here, unfortunately, but this is still a pretty cool planetarium simulator. If you want to download it, the link's in the description, and yeah, gonna have to end it off here, unfortunately. I don't think I'm gonna make another video of this, though. I think this is just gonna be a one-time thing. So, anyway, hope you guys still enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video I make. Later.